Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of chapter 7, Acids, Bases and Salts. First, let's classify oxides based on their properties. Oxides are compounds made when metals or nonmetals combine with oxygen. Examples include carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. Oxides can be either acidic or basic, and this classification is related to the metallic and non metallic character of the elements. Acidic oxides are usually formed by nonmetals. Examples include sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. Acidic oxides react with alkalis to produce salt and water, that is, neutralization. For example, carbon dioxide, which is an acidic oxide, and sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali, gives sodium carbonate, which is a salt, and water. On the other hand, basic oxides are typically formed by metals. Examples include copper 2 oxide and calcium oxide. Basic oxides react with acids to produce a salt and water, that is neutralization. For example, calcium oxide, which is a basic oxide, and hydrochloric acid gives calcium chloride, which is a salt, and water. Next, we have amphoteric oxides. Amphoteric oxides are unique because they are oxides that can react with both acids and bases to produce a salt and water. Two common examples of amphoteric oxides are aluminium oxide and zinc oxide. Here are some example reactions showing how zinc oxide and amphoteric oxide reacts with both acids and bases. So the reaction with an acid will be zinc oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride and water. The reaction with a base is zinc oxide reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium zinc oxide and water. These reactions demonstrate that zinc oxide can act both as an acid and a base, hence it is an amphoteric oxide. Preparing soluble salts. A salt is a compound that is typically formed when the hydrogen ion of an acid is replaced by a metal ion or another positive ion. Let's take a look at the preparation, separation and purification of soluble salts. There are several methods to achieve this depending on the reactants used. These methods include the reaction of an acid with an alkali by titration, excess metal, excess insoluble base, excess insoluble carbonate. First method is titration where you carefully add the alkali to the acid until neutralization occurs forming a soluble salt. So first measure a known volume of alkali into a conical flask using a pipette. Add a few drops of indicator such as methyl orange or thymolphthalein to the alkali. 
gradually add acid from a burette until the indicator changes color, indicating neutralization. Record the volume of acid used. Now that we know how much acid is needed to make the salt, we repeat the experiment without the indicator using the recorded volume of acid. Heat the resulting neutralized solution in an evaporating basin to partially evaporate the water. This step separates the water from the salt solution by evaporation. Allow the solution to cool and crystallize. This step separates the salt from the solution by forming solid crystals. Next, drain the excess solution and allow the crystals to dry. This step purifies the crystals by removing any remaining solution and allowing the pure crystals to dry. Let's look at an example. For this reaction, measure a known volume of sodium hydroxide into a flask and add thymolphthalein. Slowly add hydrochloric acid until the solution suddenly turns from blue to colorless, indicating neutralization. Record the amount of acid used. Repeat without thymolphthalein for purity. Heat the solution to get sodium chloride crystals. To make a soluble salt using the other three methods, the steps are basically the same. This method involves reacting an acid with an excess of a reactive metal. Add a lot of metal to the acid in a beaker. The metal dissolves and bubbles of hydrogen gas come out. Allow the reaction to continue until no more gas is produced. This shows that all the acid has reacted with the metal. Filter the mixture to remove any unreacted metal. Evaporate the filtered solution to obtain the pure salt. This method ensures that all the acid reacts with the metal, making a salt and releasing hydrogen gas. Let's look at an example. Zinc sulfate can be made by reacting dilute sulfuric acid with zinc. So the zinc metal will react with the sulfuric acid and bubbles of hydrogen are produced until all the sulfuric acid is used up. Now once the reaction is over, remember we used excess zinc. So any remaining zinc must be filtered. That leaves us with zinc sulfate, which is the salt we are preparing. Now we will heat this solution to make it saturated and then leave it to cool so that crystals of zinc sulfate will form through crystallization. Similarly, you can use an excess of an insoluble base to react with acid to form a soluble salt and the excess solid is then filtered out. Add a large amount of the insoluble base to the acid in a beaker. Stir and heat the mixture until no more of the base dissolves. That is, until the base stops disappearing and a mixture or suspension of the base forms in the acid. Filter the mixture to remove any unreacted base. This process separates the solid base from the liquid solution. Evaporate the filtered solution to obtain the pure salt. This step involves heating the solution to evaporate the water leaving behind the crystallized salt. Example in this reaction, copper 2 oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to produce copper 2 sulfate and water. After the reaction, any remaining copper 2 oxide is filtered out. 
This leaves us with copper 2 sulphate solution, the salt we are preparing. To purify it further, we heat the solution to make it saturated and allow it to cool, causing crystals of copper 2 sulphate to form. Next, acid with excess insoluble carbonate. Add an excess of the insoluble carbonate to the acid in a beaker. Stir and heat the mixture until no more of the carbonate dissolves. That is, until the carbonate stops dissolving and a mixture of the carbonate forms in the acid. Filter the mixture to remove any unreacted carbonate, that is, any remaining carbonate in excess. Evaporate the filtered solution to obtain the pure salt. For example, copper 2 carbonate reacts with sulfuric acid to produce copper 2 sulfate, water and carbon dioxide gas. After the reaction, any remaining copper 2 carbonate is filtered out. This leaves us with copper 2 sulfate solution, the salt we are preparing. To purify it further, we heat the solution to make it saturated and allow it to cool, causing crystals of copper 2 sulphate to form. That concludes part 2 of chapter 7, Acids, Bases and Salts. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye-bye.